Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Lord, for a new day. On this morning, we're just going to dive right into the word of God. We are on Proverbs chapter 23 on today. Thank you, Lord. Woo. We're moving along. It's so, so refreshing just to be in the word of God and just to just reflect on his goodness and his love. And just to just dwell in his presence, it's just amazing. So on this morning, I'm just going to read a few verses of Proverbs chapter 23, and then we're going to pray. Um, just pray that God will continue to just speak to our hearts concerning his word. And it says, while dining with a ruler, pay attention to what is put before you. If you are a big eater, put a knife to your throat. Do not despise all the delicacies, for he might be trying to trick you. Don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit. In, a, in the blink of an eye, wealth disappears, for it will sprout wings and fly away like an eagle. Don't eat with people who are stingy. Don't desire del delicacies. They are always thinking about how much it costs. Eat and drink, they say, but they don't mean it. You will throw up what little you've eaten and your compliments will be wasted. Don't waste your breath on fools, for they will despise the wisest advice. Don't cheat your neighbor by moving the, the, the ancient boundary markers. Don't take the line off a defensive often, for their redeemer is strong. He himself will bring their charges against you. Commit yourself to instruction. Listen carefully to the words of knowledge. Don't fail to discipline your children. They won't die if you spine them. Physical discipline may well save them from death. My children, if your heart is wise, my own heart will rejoice. Everything in me will celebrate when you speak what is right. Don't envy sinners, but always continue to fear the Lord. Your hope will not be diminished. My children, listen and be wise. Keep your hearts on the right course and do not carouse with drunkards or feast with gluttons, for they are on their way to poverty and too much sleep clothes them in rags. Listen to your father who gave you life and don't despise your mother when she is old. Get the truth and never sell it. Also get wisdom, discipline, and good judgment. The father of a godly children has cause for joy. What a pleasure to have children who are wise. So give your father and your mother joy. May she who gave you birth be happy. Oh, my son, give me your heart. May your eyes take the light in following my ways. A prostitute is a dangerous trap. A promiscuous woman is as dangerous as falling into a narrow well. She hides and waits like a robber, eager to take more men unfaithfully. Who, have, who has anguish? Who has sorrow? Who is always fighting? Who is always complaining? Who has unnecessary bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Is it the one who spends long hours in the taverns trying to out drink, trying out new drinks? Don't gaze at the wine, seeing how red it is, how it sparkles in the cup, how smoothly it goes down. For in the end, it bites like a poisonous snake. It stinks like a viper. You will see it. You will see hallucinations and you will say crazy things. You will stagger like a sailor tossed at sea, clinging to the swaying mass. And you will say, they hit me, but I didn't feel it. I don't even know it when they beat me up. When will I wake up so I can look for another drink? My Lord, thank you Lord for the reading of your word. When can I wake up for another drink? How drunk can you get? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Father, thank you on this morning. That is just something else. We talk about <laughs> we talk about drunkenness earlier in the um, in, in another chapter, and it just I mean, it was just amazing to see that so many don't realize what happens. And I just want to stay there for a moment because that's where we ended at on verse. Um, I think that's verse thirty-five. And it's, yeah, it's talk. It's a, you will say they hit me, but I didn't feel it. I don't even know it when they beat me up, when I wake up so I can look, when will I wake up so I can look for another drink? Even in the midst of being a drunk, you're being advised not to stay away from, from strong drink and stay away from wine. Don't look at it and determine when can I get another drink? Because you're going to end up in a situation where you don't even realize what took place with you. Or what happened um, I think I've said before that you know when we drink or when people because not we because I don't drink but when people drink I say we because we are all people but um, when people drink sometimes they are so unaware of what takes place or they don't remember what took place last night they don't remember what happens um, but it's so important to keep your mind, keep your focus, keep your understanding and not be taken advantage of. We know that are many people can attest to being drunk and being taken advantage of and being mistreated or abused or sexually abused. And that is just not right. But we have to always keep a consciousness as to um, what, how alert we are and what are we doing. Um, the story of Lot comes to mind when Lot uh, daughters, they actually went in with him and they um, had sex with him and they got him drunk and they got him drunk to the point where as the oldest and the youngest daughters, they actually um, came together and they came together with a plan that they're going to have sex with their dad because there was no more men at that time in the cave area that they were living in to repopulate so they got their dad drunk and they actually went in with lot the older sister first and then the the uh, the younger sister came the next night and was like okay well the older sister says okay well it's your turn you go in with him so they got him drunk again and made had sex with him and um they both conceived sons so we have to understand and lot had no idea of what was taking place and this is a this is a good example of what can possibly happen when you're not alert when you're not aware that things take place and you can live a life of regret not even knowing who it is but in this scenario they knew who it was it was their father which is really disgusting yes i said it <laughs> it was disgusting but hey it is what it is incest has been around from way back then it's not right but it's you know it's an example for us to learn from so that we can have our um focus and we can zone in on what we need to zone in so that these things can no longer um happen to us nowadays um you know so it's just important to be alert be aware have full consciousness of your entire being in your body and it, um, we're going to look at verse 1. It says, when you're dining with a ruler, pay attention to what is put before you. Uh, verse 2 says, if you're a big eater, pay, uh, put a knife to your throat. Verse 3 says, don't desire all the delicacies, for he might be trying to trick you. And don't weigh yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit. So, because in a blink of an eye, your, your wealth can disappear. Uh, but it's so important that when we sit with people, especially when you're making deals, you don't go there or you're in, in a business setting, you don't go with the anticipation to be bribed or to be um, enticed by whatever's before you or they're feeding you or they're giving you things and trying to make you um, come to what their likings and their desires might be. Because they would also said, verse uh, 7 says, There's always think, they're always thinking about how much it costs eat and drink and they say they don't what they say they don't mean it so eventually verse 8 tell you what's going to happen when you do this he says you will throw up what little you've eaten and your compliments would have been wasted so it's it's a it's an insult to throw up a food after you've eaten it so obviously it's not a good food but god won't even even let it to digest because we know that the intent and the motives were wrong so we're just being encouraged to Remember, verse 11 say, for their redeemer is strong. He himself will bring the charges against you. Verse 10 says, don't cheat your neighbors by moving the ancient boundary markers and don't take the land 
off the defenseless offense. So we back to offense, we're back to, um, they were talking about the defenseless ones. We're talking about people taking advantage of the poor and those that are in need. We talked about widows earlier. We talked about poor, the poor ones. So don't move the uh, boundary lines. Don't ch don't cheat somebody out of their property property and say, okay, well, we're going to move it because you know what? God will be their defense. And it says that cl clearly their redeemer the, is strong for God is strong and he himself will bring the charges against you. So it's always important to whatever you do, do it fairly. Whatever you do, do it that God will be glorified. So we're just going to pray on this morning that God will get the glory in our lives, whatever the situation is, whatever, wherever we go, whatever we think about, whatever we say, that he would be pleased. So Father, on this morning, we come to tell you, thank you. Hallelujah, God. Thank you. Just go ahead and tell him, thank you. Thank you. Father, we thank you for your word once again. We thank you, God, that your word will continue to refresh us daily. It will continue, God, to give us an understanding of all the things that you're saying to us, to give us an understanding on the things that we ought to do, the things that we that we should not do. Father, we ask, oh God, that we will continue to, oh God, listen to the things that you have left for us to do. Let us, oh God, heed your word. Let us take, oh God, account of our lives and just remove everything out of us that is not like you let us oh god be mindful god to give you the glory at every step of our lives father on this morning i come against everything that is not of you let your people oh god examine their hearts daily god that you will be glorified hallelujah god you be glorified in the lives of your people god remove everything out of us god that would hinder our walk with you remove oh god every distraction every haughty spirit every high-minded every oh god lying spirit every gossiping spirit every mind of sin and every thought of sin i ask so oh god that you would make this nation a pure people father that you would be glorified that your name would be lifted up God, on this morning, I thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Father, we talk about the drunkard on this morning, and I pray for everyone that's battling with addiction, not just of drunkenness, oh God, but I pray, God, that your people would, oh God, give themselves to you, God, that they would, oh God, surrender. I pray that you would help the addicts, oh God, those that are on drugs, those, those that are on um, uh, pills and popping pills and those that are on any every kind of drug and every addiction and every habit, oh God, alcohol, oh God, in the name of Jesus, I ask, oh God, that you would give them strength, that they would seek you, that they would know that you're able to do all things. Help them, oh God, to put their, oh God, desires in you. Oh God, remove the taste out of the mouths of your people. Hallelujah, God, remove the taste. Remove the taste out of the mouths of your people, God, that they would know, God, that you're able to deliver. Father, you are a deliverer. You are a healer. You are strength in the time of weakness. I pray that you would be strength to everyone that is on um, addictions, that have addictions, that have habits that are not of you. I pray, God, that you would give them strength to overcome every addiction and every habit and every bad habit, everything that will cost them to not be their selves, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you would make your people a wise people, God. Let them not throw away their monies and their time, their energy, their youth. Hallelujah. Let them not waste another moment of their lives. But Father, I ask that the Holy Spirit will go before your people, that your people would understand, God, that you're waiting for them to call on your name. Father, we ask, oh God, that you would call the Yomakur that your people would call on the name of Jesus on this morning. God, that you would capture the hearts of your people, that they would, oh God, totally surrender and commit their lives to you. God, that every habit and every addiction, every distraction on this morning would be laid at your feet. Father, I need you on this morning. We see that so many are on drugs and strung out. So many are in the strip clubs. I need you on this morning to move through this nation in the midst of everything. God, we know, God, that, hallelujah, God, that, your people are in desperate needs. God, Father, I thank you on today for you get the glory. You get
get the glory out of the lives of your people. I thank you, God, that you would give men willpower. I thank you, God, that your Holy Spirit would strengthen them to overcome every challenge and every obstacle of the Every opposition that is set before your people will be faced with the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus on this morning over the addiction, God. I command every stronghold to be broken in the name of Jesus. I declare life over the lives of your people that don't have the willpower. God, your Holy Spirit, move to this nation. Oh, God, so many are strung out. <laughs> but God, I need you on this morning. <laughs> have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way, God. Put a taste of you. Put a taste of your word in the hearts and the minds and the spirits of your people, in the mouths of your people. Even from cigarettes, God, and all God, eat the little drinks and things that are, would distract your people. Father, I ask, oh God, that your people would preserve their health. I ask, oh God, that they would understand, God, that there is greater purpose in them other than, oh God, drugs and addictions and things that they thought they would not be caught up and strung out on. Father, because every one don't go into it trying to figure out if they're going to be stuck on the drug for the next 15, 20 years. But I ask, oh God, that you would make your people understand, hallelujah, God, that there is, oh God, hope in you. There is a peace in you. God, you are a deliverer on this morning, and I pray, God, that you would deliver your people. I pray that you would give them strength to overcome every habit and every addiction. Father God, even the things that are not so, so, oh God, severe as um, alcoholism and drugs. Every sin is a sin. But God, I ask that you remove your people from their mindsets, oh God, the bad habits. Oh God, as simple as lying and gossiping. Father God, the lustful spirit that rampage to this earth. I pray God that the hearts of your young people in particular would be directed unto you, God. I pray that all men would come unto you, but God, draw the hearts of your young people. So many people are walking in lust. So many people are walking in the desires of their flesh. But God, help your people to walk after you, that they would trust you, that they would know, God, that you are the desire. Oh God, that they should should be yearning after. Father, on this morning, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way. Move mightily in this nation. God, I pray, God, that you would lift up your people and strengthen them. Let them know, God, that you're able to bring them out. I lay down every habit, every addiction, every sin, everything, God, that is not like you. The hearts of the nation will be laid down at your feet, and I pray, God, that you would restore the minds of your people. I pray that you would shape your people anew and afresh, God, that they would accept you. God, your word said you had already done it because you had died on the cross. Now, God, I pray for the hearts of men to be softened, that they would accept you, that they would come to know you, God, in a new way, that they would live for you, that they would walk with you, that they would trust you, that they would put their hope in you, that they would put their trust in you, that they would call on your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Let them call on the name of Jesus on this morning that deliverance will take place in every area of their lives. Uh, that their families would be delivered, that they would be set free, that minds would be restored, that renewing, oh God, of you, you and your word would be restored to them, oh God. Revive the hearts of your people. Revive your hearts. Uh, revive the hearts on this morning, God, that you would be glorified. Father, thank you on today for what you're doing. God, you be glorified. You be glorified. You be glorified. You be glorified, God. Strengthen the nation, God, that their faith would be in you. Uh, that their hope would be in you. That the joy of the Lord would be upon them, oh God. So many are sad and depressed. So many are neglected and, oh God, refused by so many, but on this morning, I pray that you would be a father. To those that don't have a father, and those that don't have a mother, I pray, God, that you would comfort your people, that they would know the love of Christ in a new way. I pray that the strength of the Lord would come to Masia, will encompass the people, God, that they would be comforted on this morning with your love. Father, thank you. Thank you for your love. 
Let your love will pour, God, into the lives of your people that they will trust you and you alone. God, on today, I just ask, oh God, that your will be done. There's so many things going on, God. We have so many things to stay before you for. We have so many situations that are pressing on the heart. But God, I thank you that each day you care for your people. I thank you that each day... Hallelujah, God, you know the needs of your people. Now help your people to believe that you are able to do whatever your word said that you can do, that you will do all things, even the impossible, because the, with God, there is nothing impossible. With God, all things are possible. But Father, I thank you for the possibilities. I thank you for the Nemi Kurosa. I thank you for the possibilities that you're doing daily in the lives of the, those that don't believe. Make believers out of your people. I pray that the fate of the nation be increased. I pray that the fate of the nation be increased, that they would trust in you and trust in your word, that your word would bring strength to them. Your word would bring deliverance. I pray that they would do good or mind. They would call on you, God, because you are the redeemer. I thank you for being a redeemer on this morning. Capture the lives of your people while we still have time. I thank you in advance, God, for your hands. So, God, your continual hands are, you know, stretched. Father, we give you glory on this morning. All on and all praise, it belongs to you. These things I ask in no other name than the name of Jesus. I come to tell you, thank you. Father, I come to tell you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I come to tell you, thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. These things we ask in no other name than the all sovereign king. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God, you be glorified. Father, you be lifted up. Oh, God, you be honored on this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you. Be blessed and may the Lord continue to be with you.